Hey, y'all. This is just going to be a little recap of um, absolute value equations and inequalities. Everyone always has a hard time with these. So let me just sort of recap what the three things are that we're looking at in this section. So up here, first, we have an equals. Um, if we have an equals, that's pretty okay because then we're just going to set it equal to that thing or equal to the opposite of the thing. And these are the notes that are coming with the exam. And so what this is representing is this first box right here. So if we see an equation, which means equal sign, it's just whatever's in the absolute value is going to equal b or it's going to equal the negative b. So the one I'm using here is absolute value of x equals 5. So that'd be x could be 5 because it'd make 5, or it could be negative 5 because it'd make 5, negative, still make 5, sorry. Um, graphically, these next two make a lot more sense if you think about the graphs. I'm going to emphasize that here. So the blue one is the absolute value. The green one is 5. So this is just y equals 5. So here, this one is saying, when does the blue graph equal the green graph? And that's what we're seeing right there is at 5 and at negative 5. Here, where it's saying absolute value of x is less than that 5, that is saying, where is the blue graph, the absolute value of x, under the green graph. So if you look, that's in this pointy part right here, right? That's where the graph is less than. So that means any of these x values that I plug in between negative 5 and 5 are going to give me values where the y's are less than 5. So what we're really looking for there is where's the graph under that value, and that's going to be in between these two points every single time. So you don't need to do test points. Every time you have an absolute value that's less than something, it's going to be this pointy part at the bottom in between the values. So that's this part right here. Ugh. So every time we see a less than, we're going to set up this and we're solving for x. And we're going to have that, um, that continuous uh, interval for a solution set. Um, and if I change, let me turn this one on. So this is absolute value of x less than 5. You can see right here it's showing all the values between uh, negative 5 and 5 would be my solutions because again that's where the blue graph is under the green graph. So the last possibility is where is it greater than 5? So let me put that in here. So this is saying um, where is the blue graph larger than the green graph? Where are the y values bigger? So if you look that's going to happen out here to the edges and again this isn't every single time so there's no need to do test points. If you see a greater than it's going to split up like this and those intervals are going to be correct. Because um, what we're finding is where it's above the graph. So again, if I turn on the, the equals, you can see the red is showing me where my solutions are. So it's everything less than negative 5, everything greater than positive 5. And these are these are going to happen every single time. The, um, the only thing they can do that's a little bit sneaky, uh, let me scoot that out of the way, is what if I give an equation that doesn't have a solution? So like y is negative 5. So when would the absolute value of x be um, less than negative 5? And you see how I'm not, it's not doing anything, and it's because that is a no solution. There is no place where this blue graph is less than that green graph. And so here, no solution. So we have to be careful if there's a negative on the outside, but as long as these are positive values out here, um, what I have here, and these are the notes that will come with the exam. So if you don't remember stuff, just look it up. It's all right here in the notes. Um, this, is, this is exactly how these are going to work every single time, so no need for testing.